All right, guys. How's it going, everybody? Um, Dr. Taylor Premier here with uh, Gestalt Education, along with uh, Brett Winchester and then Michael Shacklock uh, of Neurodynamic Solutions. So um, we just got done with the four-day course, the upper and the lower. Uh, it, it was uh, like drinking through a fire hose, but uh, it was uh, such a good weekend and uh, uh, re really put it into perspective of why uh, the NDS logo is one of our one of our core four and uh, why, why it's so important to our approach. So uh, we had a really really fun time hosting you. So. Awesome, great pleasure, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, really good. Um, so, do, do you maybe want to just give kind of an overview of, of uh, kind of the concepts that we, we went over this yeah, weekend? And, absolutely. Uh, that? Yeah, absolutely. One of the important, um, I would say, m misunderstandings about neurodynamics is that people think it's neural mobilization or neural flossing plus the neurosciences. Now, of course, that's to some extent true, but for me, clinical neurodynamics or, or how to apply neurodynamics is really a clinical diagnosis and treatment system based on specific functional disturbances in the nervous system as they relate to musculoskeletal. You know, we, we know that the most common cause of radiculopathy is compression. We know that the most common um, cause of carpal tunnel syndrome, for instance, in the musculoskeletal area it is compression. So a lot of what's been done in the past is mobilising or, or applying force to nerve uh, when actually it's already forced on. So maybe we're producing adaptive responses, but what about making the diagnosis as to causes like friction, irritation, compression, relating to the way we move and the way we use our body. So for me, it's got four parts. There's inclusion, exclusion criteria. So we need to know when we should or should not be mobilizing someone's yeah. nerves or, or treating the musculoskeletal system around, the, around that, that nerve. We also need functional diagnoses or, or categories of functional disturbances based on connecting mechanisms to clinical presentations. For each one of those, then we need progressions from low to high functional levels mm. because people have varying degrees of function, mm. so true. particularly yeah. in relation to pain. Right. Uh, and, and, and then the last thing we need is an exit strategy where we might be giving patient exercises or home, home activities, self-management strategies. And, and so but if a system has those four things, to me it's a great system. Mm. And neuro clinical neurodynamics has those four things. Mm. Right. What do you think as far as neurodynamics coexisting with other systems, like how it fits in with... That's a good question. Uh, the reason it's a good question is we have, we have partly on social media, also clinical concepts that are taught uh, internationally, uh, fighting or, or wars or disputes between different tribes. Okay. And, and to me, if we're all looking at the same problem from different angles and we're all getting the right mechanisms, then approaches should be integratable. And hopefully people perceive that the clinical neurodynamic system that we present is integrable with daily practice and also the concepts and approaches they already use. So to me, they should be integrable. Yeah, yeah and I think uh, as the weekend went along, I mean, we had many discussions about its relationship with MDT, DNS, manipulation, so yeah. I think it, it, it actually fits perfectly. It really does, it really does. And, and even, uh, you know, Brett and I have been fortunate to take the course before this, and. Uh, the amount of understanding I think that we gained just in the, seeing it the second time really put things into perspective and, and uh, man, I'm so excited to get back into the clinic and, and start applying some of the things that I was doing wrong, you know, <laughs> and then some of the things that um, I, you know, I, I can, I forgot about it that, that are going to be really game changers. So I don't think anything gets more bastardized in manual medicine than neurodynamics. I think more people think, and I was guilty of this also, you think you know it and then uh, until you go through your course, then you realize you you don't know it. You so, don't know it. Yeah. You don't at all. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not just flossing. <laughs> no, it's much more than neural mobilization, and it's about linking mechanisms to presentations and, and being uh, catering for the uniqueness of the patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. We had a lot of discussions about evidence this weekend as well, and so um, w one of the things that I appreciate so much about getting to know you is that uh, you, you're never throwing the baby out of the bathwater. And, uh, you know, like, uh, we, we had, we've had talk, conversations about how long it takes for the current evidence to get to what we're seeing in the, in the clinic, you know, in the, in the treatment room, and, and uh, that's something that you hold true to you, to you as a researcher and a clinician um, uh, of doing that, so I, I really appreciated that. So. What's the future of neurodynamics? What does it look like in five, well, five years? Well, fortunately, not much has actually been thrown away or disbanded because of an error, an error in either reason or the science. So most of what's happened is remains, but it's a foundation on which we develop the future. Mm. And for me, if we think of uh, where the manual therapy sits with science, there's obviously an excellent facility to produce short-term changes 
But for me, long-term changes are also related to how people behave, how they move, and how they exercise and rehabilitate themselves or improve their own performance. So for me, neurodynamics must go into activity, movement, exercise, and performance mm -hmm. in a way that matches current concepts on how people move. Sure. And you're currently kind of working on some curriculum yeah, yeah, for right. that? Yeah, yeah that's we exciting. Are. We're working on an exercise system for, for neurodynamics where we, we'll be integrating with other approaches so that we can help people move better, maybe protect their nervous system better, or move their nervous system better, and, and move much more functionally and efficiently. Right, yeah. it's so exciting, really exciting. Um, well, well, we, we'll have you back every year, <laughs> if, if you'll have us. Yeah, yeah, um, so so our, our plan going forward is to have uh, repeat this level one course uh, next year, and then the year after that, dive into the more advanced uh, neurodynamics. Yeah. And so, what, what's kind of what's kind of the difference between the, the level one and then the, the, the next level? Yeah. The level, the next level, takes into account a few, a few more things, and, and one of the the common clinical events that it, it takes into account is when someone has, for instance, pin, pins and needles or pain down a limb, and you do a neurodynamic test, and it's perfectly normal. Hmm. Now, we would normally suspect that there's a neurodynamic problem with radiating pain and neurological symptoms. But if you're doing the neurodynamic test and it's normal, it kind of suggests that fundamentally there's not much wrong with their nervous system. So probably what's happening is that they're having abnormal force applied to the nerve. Mm -hmm. And so the nerve isn't fundamentally wrong, it's just responding to abnormal force. So we learn ways of detecting when people are putting abnormal force on their nerve so that they can move differently and give themselves relief without necessarily needing neural mobilization. Mm -hmm. So fundamentally we do different classifications of problems which are cornerstones in clinical reasoning and clinical application. So we don't end up mobilizing nerves that don't need mobilizing. Right. Which I think that's a huge irony. I think the people out there that haven't been in your course they go into that at a time when they shouldn't be doing it. That's like the really big irony of it. When they're doing it, they shouldn't be doing it. Because sometimes the nerves just need to be put in a position to rest. Absolutely. Yeah. And there are also more nerves to treat. We, we look at the um, myodural attachments but, but between the rectus capitis posterior minor coming under the occiput into the dura with a cervicogenic headache. We look at uh, we treat um, suprascapular nerve, mm. axillary nerve, wow. um, radial radial sensory nerve, median nerve, and all nerve at the elbows. We also treat um, a hamstring injury related to the spinal cord research that we've been doing on how the cord moves and how the sciatic nerve moves in relation to cord movement. So we use contralateral neurodynamics to help us make a diagnosis of a neurodynamic aspect to hamstring injury. And we've done some research recently that shows that we can move the sciatic nerve quite specifically compared to biceps femoris. Mm. So we're, we're, we're finding more and more with the research that we can be more specific than we originally thought. And so we're going to be developing um, rehab and motor control and performance strategies for hamstring injury in relation to those who have a neurodynamic or sciatic mm. nerve element to that problem. That's just one of the other things. We also have some new diagnostic categories for lumbar spine, sliding and opening and closing dysfunctions. We also treat saphenous nerve, medial knee pain, anterior hip pain, coming right down at the ankle, and even uh, Morton's neuroma and the keyboard syndrome. Hmm. So there's a lot of new conditions that we apply new principles to and expand the area into other parts of the body. Wow. So awesome. <laughs> well, <laughs> until you. that time, yeah. um, I know uh, when I was uh, in school and growing up, the neurodynamic book is excellent. So your book, your original textbook is was great, still is great. So I'd recommend everyone, if you don't have that book, to get that. Um, and then you also talk about your other book that you basically summarize Greg's work, right? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, we, we've, had, we've produced a book called um, Biomechanics of the Nervous System, Greg Revisited. And that's a basically a collection of his work. I, I haven't done any work in it apart from organising it, and mm. we've reproduced it uh, authentically on uh, under licence to Do Dr. Bree from Dr. Bree and his wife Elizabeth Bree. Um, where basically we show uh, rightly that he was the Leonardo da Vinci of biomechanics or the nervous system. He studied in cadavers. He was a, a clinical neurologist, of course. So he looked at radiology and how nerves move under radiological circumstances or imaging. Um, he looked at um, how the nervous system behaves with specific loading. He created visual algorithms of how force transduction occurred in different parts of the, of the body. He was absolutely seminal in his work and, and, and giving us an understanding of how the nervous system moves. And so that's a book called Brieg, uh, sorry, Biomechanics of the Nervous System, Brieg Revisited. Right. Wow. And then you're uh, on the neurodynamic website, uh, 
NDS. That's yep. how we find you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 Solutions.com and you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and so forth. Great. Yeah, it's awesome. Man, well, uh, it, what a pleasure having you here. Um, drank some good wine, had some good conversations, yeah. and uh, uh, learned a ton. So uh, what a pleasure getting to know you more, and uh, we look thank forward you. to next year. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Thank you, what guys. a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right, guys, we'll, we'll stay tuned um, for, for more videos just like this, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll kind of be plugging a little bit here and there on when we get the dates uh, for sure settled. And uh, we'll, we'll be doing a, a, a discount for the people that already took the course uh, through us, through Soul Education. Uh, they'll get a little bit of money off the top to retake it because I think it's really, really important to see this information multiple times. It's not something that you came up with overnight and it's not something that we're going to grasp no, overnight. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great day.